So, um, yeah, we could come back to that part and then do something else across that 45 to keep our privacy. And like, I guess my thought was, it's not my property, but like if you're 45, you have a short picket fence, you can see over and you can put flowers or something in front of that. But it would also help block that. But, I mean, as we, we spoke with work with regard to that, we've spoken with you with regard to that, and then today, that was issued back on the 11th of August, but I received it this morning, with an appearance ticket for that, for that. So how do I handle this? Do I s when I would do comply it, with you and then go to court? I would make your well, corrections. If, yeah, if you correct. I take some before and after pictures. If you correct the violation, court officer is satisfied with the correct the violation, then I'm just, I presume the village is going to recommend the court dismiss the, the charge. Well, the court appearance is on the 25th. And today's the 19th. And to try to get a company to come in and take care of that within that time period. Yeah, your initial appearance is going to be to uh, basically on our feet. And, uh, and if you advise the court that you're in the process of correcting the violation, and ask for her, ask for the, the return date to be adjourned, I'm sure they'll comply with that. But that did not come from the village, right? Came from, right. It came from codes, county codes, county and all. But again, if you if you notify the court and if you communicate with wards that you're correcting the violation, I'm sure that the court will adjourn the, uh, the return date. But I'd say that would take before and after pictures so the people at the court have got the proof. For the judge. And if act quite frankly, if uh, uh, you get the court date adjourned and you correct the violation to the satisfaction of the code officer, uh, I, I'm sure the village won't have an objection if we recommend the court to just dismiss the charge. It is for us. It, yep. it works for you. We're, we've said very long we were willing to help. Anybody on the board have any questions for Mr. Boyd? Or yes, Henry. Nice. In regards to this, can we do public comment? Well, it's, it, this references the same idea. The that corner, one, the corner of Forest and... I'm, we're not bringing anything else up. We can bring it up at public okay. comment. Okay, we're going to public comment. Okay. This is between the boys and us, right. and Colts. I I was expecting more to be here. So. Does a, any board members have any questions? Thank you. Okay, moving on. And, uh, approval of minutes. Uh, July 15th, regular board meeting. Oh, he's got to get tired of him.
You there, Charlie? I am, but that's fine. It's coming out of the cell phone. <laughs> right on the wrong number. Is he coming out of the stuff? First day with his new toy. Yeah, right. We got it there. Try this one, Charlie. Got you, Charlie? Can you hear me? Hello, Charlie. Hold on. Hold on. Okay, here we go. Sorry about that. I almost forgot that's another board member, Charlie. Some of these we have to do virtual for like your Zoom meetings and things. All right, moving on, Charlie. We're at the approval of minutes of the July 15th record board minute. I have a motion to approve those. Second. Have a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, approval of minutes. Uh, special board meeting uh, August 13th. Special meeting. A motion on that one? I'll make a motion. Second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I bring this down to approval of vouchers. Okay, the vouchers that have been audited. The general fund, $167,308.40. Water, $64,592.37. Sewer, $25,720.80. And capital, $1,200,769.81, which have all been audited, and I move for their, I move that they be approved. And no second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unfinished business. Five streets. New construction project. So uh, I'll give you guys a little updates. Um, all utilities have been completed along Park Ave and Trinity Ave. Uh, binder is in place along those streets as well. Um, Sidewalk is being installed this week. Um, we have utility work currently occurring on Shady Avenue right now. Um, the plan at this point is for Highlander to have all their utility work wrapped up by the end of September so that all the roads can be uh, paved and topped for the for winter. Um, <laughs> That's all, that's the update I have for five streets. I do have um, change order nine, which the two part change order, um, one is for Highlander, one is for FT Kane. Um, the Highlander change order is in the amount of $94,254.40. And the FT Kane change order is in the amount of $2,459.92. Was that? It's a little different than what I got. Which one? Let's see what he did. Yeah. That's subtracting me. You said 2,425, right? 2,459. Back around now. Anything else? 
thoughts on that for them? Um, the, uh, yeah, I guess for the pump station, the fence, um, the fence has been set up on the pump station, and uh, yeah, that's all, I, that's all the uh, pump data I have there. All right, we need a motion to accept uh, change order number nine for BK and Heilheimer. Second. No second. Any other questions on it? Anybody have any questions? Board member? What does that uh, have a figure of what that brings the contingency fund to the table? Yeah, so with um, this updated bond resolution that we're passing tonight, we slightly bumped up the contingency on the water side. Um, so right now we would have a total of around $500,000 in contingencies for the project. Okay. Are we satisfied with these contingency figures? Uh, I know the mayor and, and Mr. Denise have reviewed them. Are, we, are you satisfied with them? Is there any concerns? No, no, I, I mean, no. Paul and I look them over, and uh, actually, this one here is it's dropped. And discuss some changes, but okay. and some of this is it just makes sense to correct an issue that's not right. Well, we're in the project yep. and just put a band-aid on it. I mean, one issue we found down near you on Trinity and the uh, state, okay. a four-inch water main going through a sewer manhole. You don't, <laughs> you don't leave that. You take care of it. <laughs> and so there was that, like stuff like that. So that's the thing, okay? All right. So we've had the motion, a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Which brings us down to the bond resolution. Do you want to explain any of that? Or I'll be well, it's, just, it's an increase in, um, in the, it's an increase of three hundred thousand dollars allocated to the water portion of the project. Yeah, I guess to explain it, what happened was at the beginning of the project, we assigned a split to the sewer water portion, which is about seventy-five twenty-five, and then throughout the course of the project, as the change orders came in ended up coming in more on the water side than on the sewer side. So what's happening is we're bumping up the water side. However, um, the sewer side, although we're not technically decreasing it, we would not need as much contingency on the sewer side anymore. So it's, it's basically swapping funds from the, the sewer to the water side. So we're not changing the authorization on the sewer? Yes, we're not changing the numbers on the sewer. Correct. So we need a motion to pass that. Anybody doesn't have any questions on it? So moved. I'll second it. Okay, this is going to call a roll call vote. Myself, Mayor, yes. Ed? Yes. Yes. Dan? Yes. Charlie? Charlie, aye. Ed? Yes. Thank you. Have anything on uh, phase two of the wastewater treatment plan upgrades? Yes, yeah, so we'll have an update for that. Um, the design, the design is progressing. We're planning on uh, targeting October for uh, permit drawings to BC and EFG. Um, there's a plan to get uh, ETL out soon for uh, geotech work. Um, there was one thing that Gaima wants to recommend to the village, and that's to form a committee um, with municipal board members to uh, basically to review the drawings along with us as we go through the process more of the design um, so we can bounce ideas off of them. It's a little bit easier to work with a committee than um, obviously with the full board. Uh, maybe a, a recommendation to the municipal board to form a committee. Has that recommendation been made to the municipal board yet? Or? No, no, I don't know. I'm just making it now to you guys. Oh, yeah, right. Anything else on that, Kevin? 
that's the update on the first thing that I have Lots of water agreements. I think we're moving forward with that. Right, yeah, the uh, town of Watson Board approved our form, our revised form for the water agreement that was approved by the municipal board and by your board. But they had one request concerning water districts four and six because uh, there were some four. Four, I think it's four and six. Is there three, and three, and four. Four, three and four, I might say three and four. Because they're working on an independent water source that will cover those districts. They've asked uh, to have an opt out provision on 90 days notice without penalty. The municipal board, as I understand it, has approved that, which just needs to be approved by your board. Then we can get all eight contracts uh, completed and out. I'll make a motion that we allow 90 day opt out on 53 and 4. Second, Charlie. Charlie seconded. No, I, I thought you wanted to know what. Basically, they want to, uh, Watson wants to, us to change the opt out feature on Water District 3 and 4, which the Municipal Board has no problem with. That's yeah. You're second in that motion of Dan? Yes, sir. Okay, okay all in favor? Aye. 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 They're hoping to actually have their water system going by this time next year, so we'll see. <laughs> Groundwater development project. So um, we had a special meeting last week um, to sign the agreement and the notice to proceed for um, Fry Well Trailing. Um, those have been sent back to them. We're still awaiting, awaiting their bonds. Um, I did get in contact with them yesterday. They told me that they should be having their bond soon. Um, they do want to get started soon as well. They want us to tentatively plan on starting some time next week. We're not going to love without the bonds. Right. <laughs> That's too many. Obviously, too many of the bonds are in, and we're also for some. So. so let's move it forward. Correct, yeah. Water supply investigation, I believe Joe and Jay Dillon still got a meeting with the property owners, I believe. They're just waiting to get together with Jay Dillon. Yeah, I haven't heard anything about that now. LED Street Light Conversion Program, Tim and I. I had a phone conference with the New York Power Authority and the lending people. Basically, they've got all the packages for all the municipalities together, 90%, and they're supposed to be sending them out to us. And we thought we have ours by now, but we haven't received any yet. And that's, once we go over that, we can decide if we want to continue to move on forward with the project or not. They're not sure. It doesn't look like we're going to get a break from National Grid when they came through with their second uh, review of the costs. It's almost doubled, so we'll have to take a look at that. There's going to be costs showing up for maintenance in this agreement and uh, leasing. So once we get the packet, we just need to look at it closely and see if we want to continue on. Do you got anything you want to? No, I haven't heard of it either. Just like you, other than the, what they said the other day. I did hear from Mickey a quick email he said they weren't sure they might wait two weeks before they sent the packets out because they were still hoping to maybe get some kind of concessions from national grid but then i also heard after that that some of the packets are going out we haven't received anything yet. Uh, are we being held hostage by national grid are we being held hostage by national grid i'm not saying we're being held hostage but it's it's all municipalities i mean some of them we went up ours doubled for the buyout, but some places went up threefold. Do we have we do we have east do they have easements on some of our properties? Are they all current and uh, are any coming up in the near future? I believe we have correct me if I'm wrong, it's some of the watershed on that. We have some easements so uh, with the national grid, correct? But Dan, the other thing is 
I don't know that they expire. Yeah, if they're easements, they don't expire. But if they're filed, they run with them. We renegotiated one once. Or, or well, you can renegotiate if you want to, but I mean, if they're not willing to, the easement is, is there. It's going to stay there. Okay, we have. There's we something. Have, there's something there. Information. Say. We have a good working relationship in that direction. We ain't really had any problems with the dump. But this is going to, this is probably going to squash this project if it doesn't the price. No, I don't think it's going to squash. It's just going to turn into payback. And payback's going to be Your longer. payback will be. Payback's going to be longer. I think it's still a good deal for the village. Just the payback will be longer. But I think originally the payback was going to be seven years. Now it'll probably stretched out to maybe 10 or 11. Yeah, or nine. Who knows? We have to look at it when we get the time. Well, we won't know until we get the packet where we can look at all the numbers. Are we, are we pretty... Uh, Confident on the figures we're getting at from Mr. Dietrich? That they'll pan out to be what he says they'll be? Oh, well, well, he's getting his numbers from the power show. Yeah, he's getting it from your power show. The, the main thing Tom Hill did for us was, and that's still there, if we want to add a smart technology to the lights, they went out and got a grant, and that grant was for all the communities. It's not just us, I mean, that's all that. What is it? 50 communities that are involved in this. It's, it's, yeah. it's up uh, in this area, it's up north, some of central New York. It's mm -hmm. a big project. The national grid raised their initial estimate on everybody. Right? Yeah, everybody went off. Yeah. Now that was supposed to be reviewed by the Public Service Commission, I think. Have they done that yet? They, they're involved with it right now. Right. Yeah. They want to make sure, their job is to make sure that they're not um, you know, holding people hostage so that the numbers are legitimate. Nice set, Ross Road, the only information I have on it is we sent the letter. Nice set, I haven't heard anything back from them. I contacted Griffel's office. I recontacted Griffel's office because I hadn't heard anything and uh, the Griffel's office got back to me and said they were still waiting for information from their contacts. I found another number and a gentleman's name. I called him on the phone, talked to him. He's actually the guy that's over the guy I sent the written letter to. And he basically told me that if it was up to them, they would be here tomorrow to put the gas in. But he says things are being held up. And I asked Joe a little bit about this, uh, the Public Service Commission. He said because they're pushing for green power now, so they're holding up fossil fuel. Yeah, they have to have their license uh, uh, amended to include Ross Road, and that's going to be approved by the Public Service Commission. And uh, the Public Service Commission, like every other uh, agency in, in Albany right now, is, is uh, playing the bureaucratic game <laughs> because of the COVID thing, and everything is slowed down. So if we go back to the original contract that we had with NICE, we don't forget the Public Service Commission right, right now, said they were going to gas bill. I understand that. And, and, and what I'm saying is, and I understand what, what you're saying, but I think that we should we should hold NICE's feet to the fire because they signed a contract, and if the Public Service Commission comes back and says that it's being held up, uh, then we but, consider another avenue. I, I don't. I don't disagree. Uh, the way the first step you have to take to hold nice and speak to the fire is a complaint to the public service commission, because you got to exhaust your administrative remedies before you take any other action. If the matter is already pending in front of the public service commission and it's being held up at that level, then complaint to the public service commission that they that nice is not following the contract is doesn't make sense. So other than. Ver ver verbiage to you. Do you have any documentation from NYSEC that shows that they I don't it? have evidence that they submitted it to the Public Service Commission. It's my understanding that they have and that, that they're waiting for approval before the ground crew gets to go ahead to move forward. Um, but I also heard and, that yeah. because of COVID-19, it's tough to find people in their offices to get things done right and what I can do, Dan, is I can I can make a direct inquiry to the Public Service Commission about the status of, of that review. But I, I can do that, please. Uh, so and I'm going to say we know nothing, or we got it. Or we, again, I I, I we're understand being, we're being your, held, I we're being held hostage. I understand and, your frustrations, um, and I, I I share them, but 
we're dealing, all my dealings in the last three or four months with any agency in Albany has, has been uh, slower than it could be. Well, it reminds me that uh, they just submit. I'd like to know when they submitted it because they didn't have this issue when COVID started. They had it two years before COVID started. We're, we're uh, just about a year, um, just about a year from when they admitted that we were right in. It was last August. But your overall point, Joe, is if it's in the hands of the commission, it's pretty much a moot point because yeah. you're going to them anyways. Exactly. So, but I will, I will confirm where yeah, I can find out where we'll confirm where it is. It's not that we haven't been trying. Oh, no, I got it. It's not an issue for the right now, of course. Anything else on that? It's just sad that the original contract said the whole village, and it just didn't happen. I think we handled this, discussed the short complaint. Anybody got any? Other questions on that? Charlie, yeah. I'll talk to you after the meeting on a shrimp complaint, tell you what went on. Okay. Because you're all settled. All right, moving on to new business. Craft surcharges for June were $67.50. This would be the motion to. I'll sign the motion to approve that, Mayor. I'll sign the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, Randy Shell, we talked back in February about redoing the village and the town of Lawless comprehensive plan. And so Randy Shell and I had a Zoom meeting with the uh, Tug Hill Commission. They're going to work with us on it. And one of the things the uh, Tug Hill Commission wanted was a uh, committee. And basically, the committee's going to be 11 members. I don't have the town's numbers yet or names. I'll probably have them after their meeting tomorrow. But I think everybody got a copy of uh, the names that came up with for the village. Everybody see that? Basically, Hill uh, Commission wanted people off the planning board, zoning board, and they wanted uh, a member off of each, one or two members off of each uh, town and village board, and they wanted our superintendents. So I'd like to appoint Carla Hellinger, Rebecca Kelly, Lisa Hessner, Henry Avalon, Edward Murphy, and Paul Denise for the village side of the comprehensive plan committee. Have a motion for that? So moved. So All in favor? Aye. Aye. All in favor? Aye. We vote for law, draft number six, no parking park to have. Basically, what that is is. Now with the curbs in, you look at uh, Park Ave from Elm Street going down over the hill to Water Street. That narrows right down. You can really see it if you're driving up from Water Street. And there is no parking on Park Ave all the way from uh, Elm Street on the Boston on the east side. So what this new law will do is make it no parking on the east side from Water Street up to Elm. That way the whole east side of Park Ave will be uh, no parking and be consistent. So that's what that's all about. We had some complaints down in that area with people parking on both sides and following our people up there. I thought we should make it consistent all the way up to I make a move motion that we have a public hearing at 4 o'clock at our next meeting on September 16th for, for the proposed law, local law number 6. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Now the secret on that, 
that he, all she sent you was part one when we when, before we adapted on the 16th rule we'll do part two and three. <clears throat> Fire department budget. Oh, I don't know. No. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've had a chance to look it over, but basically, uh, uh, we always get it early here in the fall because uh, we need to adopt it early so the towns have it because they have to. Our, you know, our budget doesn't have to be done until. June first, the town's gotta to be done by January first. So this needs to be approved so the towns can they have to adopt the budget by the end of the month. Has anybody got any questions on it? You have any comments on it, Joe. You're on the phone the fire department. No. I guess my only thing would be it's nice to have a fire department that stays out of the news as opposed to the ones we've been hearing about for the last couple of decades, it seems like, in the city. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you were my way put a bonfire out last week or two. Got a busy month, but well, my granddaughter was staying with me that night and she's crap, there's a fire truck out front. <laughs> Oh, is that one? Okay, that was a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, if nobody has any questions on that, I guess we need a motion to uh, pass it. I'll make a motion to like just second the record at this point. And a party department budget. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, surplus equipment. Paul's got a couple of new trucks and he wants to get rid of a couple of old trucks. 2009 Ford F-350 Dooley, 2010 F-350 fuel truck. He'd like, uh, you want a motion so declare that surplus, right Paul? Yep. I'll make a motion. And, uh, for both that. They're yeah. both here. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. You want a motion at this time, Paul, to allow you to put them up for uh, auction? Yes, please. I'll make that motion as well. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Dallas Blue Cross Blue Shield, the Medicare Part C, Medicare Part D. Basically, this is for the new one of are retired, is not our current employees. The chance of a rate change. It's not official yet, it's just giving us notice. We'll get an official notice in October. They're required by law by the insurance department to notify us so many days ahead. If they're going, they don't have to, but chances are you're going to see something. So that's uh, basically all. Anybody got any questions on that? <coughs> Here's still my Homeland Security Emergency Services notification of female payment to the village. Anybody got a copy of that? Yeah. I'll tell you, uh, you guys want to thank Paul for that. He put a lot of work into this. And he's still working on it. There's another phase, I believe, in there, Paul? Yeah. This all comes from. Uh, does, he a, does he get a finder's fee for that? <laughs> yes, Charlie. Don't give him any ideas. <laughs> Good job. This is all over that uh, bad rainstorm we had back October 31st. And Paul put all the work on giving us some money back from FEMA on that. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul. Three line decker Joe Bosick construction design concern. Anybody get a copy of that letter? Yes. Uh, Paul, you thought you discussed this with the, the homeowners? Yes. Okay. Yep. 
Uh, is progress okay? What's that? Uh, uh, do you think that it's going okay as to addressing your concerns? Um, I've been in contact with Bill on it. Uh, uh, like I've said in the past, before they had no curbing there, so the crown of the road, the water would shed from the ground, go down into the sidewalk and lay there. Now that we have catch basins and curbing, which would direct the water, any water in the road should go into the catch basin, basins. Um, I actually went down today and took some pictures. If you look at it, his uh, driveway elevation, he shouldn't have any water at all. So <clears throat> we get a heavy rainstorm, I'll go down and take a look. But I don't see it as an issue. We should take this letter that was a notice of claim and give it to the insurance company. Yes. Well, we've discussed it with the engineers, the Highlander, too. So. We did discuss that today with Highlander. Yeah. yeah, if there is a drain concern, we have um, options out there. That we can. There's, there's storm laterals that are very close to those driveways that we could put in a little yard basement and pump into those very easily. So it's, it could be a if there is any concerns there. But um, from what I understood, I get Mr. Bowser to talk with Ryan a little bit about this, and we were going to wait for the main event speed. And so I, we hadn't heard anything back from, from uh, Mr. Bowser until, until the slider. I believe after the rain we had last night, if there was an issue, we would be ponding there today. And I did uh, take a look at it as well. Today. I didn't yeah, see any, any ponding. I, I didn't see ponding in other driveways in the village. Yeah, not, not that one. Oh. Yeah. You have any questions on that? Okay, it moves us down to Wesley Cole Lung Martial Arts Academy. They're looking for music in the park. Hopefully everybody got the emails on that. I talked with the guys phone a couple times, told them it was a board decision, and they would have to make it. But I didn't think it would go through because I know we canceled our summer rec program, the band program was canceled, and was, I know we were trying to keep numbers down in the park, and he's looking at one group of 50, possibly two groups of 50, and then there's going to be bystanders, so he's board decision how they want to go about it. Mayor, he's from Carthage? Yeah. yeah, that's kind of what I got out of it. Because he's been turned down down there, that's why he's coming here. I make a motion based. I make a motion based on COVID that uh, with with all the restrictions and regulations at this time, at this point in time, that uh, we have to deny this request. The dates too are on August thirty first to September third, so I'm not sure how it's coming around. It's not doesn't sound like it's really that. It's, coming up, so I don't know how they're going to meet the specifications or whatnot. And that's, I was just wondering too, I mean, from the opposite end of it too, I mean, we've got networks that's here or whatnot, so I'm not sure why somebody from Carthage would need well, but, but, you know, the, the whole thing that I get what, what they're trying to do, if they keep it under the crowd, I have no problem with it. But, So we had made a motion in a second. Second. Any other discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Dan? Yeah. Yeah. Ed? Yep. All right, moving on, Robin Hallad. Sewer and sidewalk. Mayor, uh, I asked, I asked uh, Robin, she was bringing up some issues to me one night, so I gave her my email address, asked her to put it in writing versus trying to disseminate it all. She did, and I discussed it with Paul before the meeting. I think Paul will fill us in on what he, what he told me. You 
Want to talk about it all? Or? Sure. I mean, basically, um, we did discuss this today. Or yeah, we discussed it with Highlander and Dynamo. <clears throat> it's been since they put the sewer in. It's actually been an issue. Um, there's a lot of ways to look at it. I believe the old system had so many cracks and waste for the sewer gas to get out of the main that nobody had an issue. And now that it's such an airtight uh, system that uh, gas is going back up into their house. Uh, we've tried in the past, uh, we tried last year to remedy the problem by putting a vent out front. Um, that didn't take care of the problem. Um, I believe there's some issues in the house. Um, we did, the village actually spent extra money and put vented manhole covers on uh, Water Street to try to alleviate the problem, which in her letter I think she's stating that it did help, but now outside smells bad. Um, so. We are, myself and Brian Nolan, who's a superintendent with uh, Guy Malt, or with uh, Highlander, are going to go down and meet with her and walk through the house and see if we can remedy the problem somehow. So. Any other questions on that? Okay, I should have asked before we went on to the correspondence and sorry about that. If any board members have any new business before we continue. All right, I guess that brings us down to village attorney. The only thing I can report Joe is that we closed on the sale on the water street property yesterday. Uh, I believe you have to come and pick up the check. That's all I thought. I just have a couple things, uh, and I think most of the board members know it. The property we owned on the corner of uh, East State and uh, Water Street, we closed on it yesterday. It's no longer the village's problem. It has new owners. And, uh, I think they're happy with it. The other thing is, uh, if you remember back in the fall, School was still in session. Suzanne Schwering's uh, class was do, wanted to do banners for the veterans and hang for the power poles in the building. Well, they've got seven of them done. And so uh, we're in the process of making arrangements to uh, get those hung up for them. And once we get them hung, uh, uh, Sue and her class are hoping to have a, a small ceremony downtown. The area they'd like them hung, especially the deceased veterans from the graduates from all of that on the poles up in front of the school. So basically the leave at the moment, but they're running from like the four corners up in front of the school. They have seven ready to go right now. Do we need and three more coming. Do we need to get permission from uh, National Grid to do that? I've been in touch with them. They have not again been in touch with two people I know on National Grid. One's Jerry Hanlon and the other is uh, Jennifer Egbert. Both of them are high up at I'm sure they'll get back to them. And I explained to them what we ought to do. Because I know we do, Pam always has to fill out paperwork for Christmas stuff so we can put up our Christmas lights. And we had banners on the pole before before they got tattered, but we put up in summer. Yes. I don't think it'd be a problem. No. I think we'd better touch base and be sure. Clerk Treasurer, do you have anything, Pam? I don't have anything. Chief of Police. Our uh, vehicle's in, and we're currently working on getting it lettered. And we get that spray to install it. It was for the stuff that's all over. That's all I got. Superintendent. Um, nothing. Capital future plans. Nothing. Personnel. We've got some executive session for personnel issue. Okay. Finance. The audits for the office are updated until the uh, end of July, so we're about to change. Okay, any other questions? Uh, 
Okay, we'll just stop the race and uh, fire your car up. Nothing. Do you have anything going on? Nope. Please be kind enough. Anybody? You got anything, Charlie? Planning board and zoning board. Nope. Municipal board. I'm out in rainy this morning. They, you know, there's no real issues that are involving the building. Tell me, nothing report. Okay, recreation. No. Nope. The only thing I have on recreation is, uh, as you know, the lease on the playground on the fairgrounds is up. We've been discussing things with the uh, fair board. And Mike Young was head of the rec commission. And got a couple more meetings, but <laughs> recreation commission was interested uh, in possibly taking over that playground area. Basically all the village would do in the town is each year we would add a little bit to our recreation budget to help them cover maintenance costs on it. But that's in the works. We haven't made anything final yet. That puts that on with that. All right, public comment. There you go, Henry. Yeah. In, in, in conjunction with the boys, problem with the trees on their street, Cascade and Pro <coughs> Street, do we not have a similar problem at Forest and Trinity with the Andre tree tree pipe building really out there? Is that not a similar problem or the same problem as the boys are facing? I thought he cut his path. I don't know. Did he come back? And then now that this construction is pretty, pretty heavy. Uh, thanks to Highlander, this section park they have from, from Boston Street to Trinity, there's now a speedway. Randy, <coughs> one, of the, one of the residents that sits on her porch and watches, wanted me to bring up that, I don't she wanted a name mention, but she said people are going down that street like they're going to the races after you're speeding down that road. So if you could, Kind of come up there, you know, more often, park out. Um, That's what happens when we take the speedboat, so. <laughs> uh, might be a day like a dollar short, but I want to submit it down this. Uh, good morning, Realty. The reason I'm doing this is because it doubles in the details. And my, my information is correct. This is a short term for the Mario Realty. This state's property is just spoke about yeah. it's 5622 Water Street. Yeah. There's no such animal in real property records. I turned up a copy of the real well, property records. It says 7519. Here's what's going on in the street. State property records don't have up to date. Huh? That land was subdivided down there. If you remember, oh, I'm just, no, I'm just saying it's. I'm they just, haven't got it up to date. I'm just saying this is a most recent piece of real property record. This is the majority, and it says all exempt. I mean, it's a village property. Yeah. You know, I just well, to the point. See the, the, the information. The, just so you know, this was the old address, 7519. We subdivided that property. We took it before the zoning board because of the. Uh, Property lines that we had to go before the zoning board, just like anybody else in the village would have to. Mm -hmm. Got our very end off. Then it went before the planning board, and once it was subdivided, where the pump station is now, the green building, that is now 7519. Oh. And the uh, Water Street house is now. They, they just don't have it updated. The real property is not. They just don't have it updated yet. Because they actually sent us. Uh, so that's, this is right. Let me see if that's on there. When the street project, they're going to put new signs on, my, on Park Ave, right? There's no parking anytime. Because since most of the parking signs have been pulled down, 
It's not because it's doing my property. Well, they're parking all over there. They're parking the wrong way on the street, on both sides of the street. And over the weekend, they were parked all the shelter. But see, some of those people can't get in the driveways yet. I mean, I maybe, yeah, maybe after this week, it'll be done. Once they put the signs up, uh, if it continues to be a problem, I'll re reference it to the signs will be going back up. I know, but I'll, I'll reference the chief room here. Signs are up. I'm going to push the dealer to park on. The people park on the wrong side of the street and for garage sales and stuff like that. You know, I'm not being the devil's advocate, but you know. No, I was down there myself early this morning and it was like this trying to get down through. Okay. Well, thanks to Highline for Haven Park out my section first on the train. Cut down the dust. Anybody else have any public comment? I guess we need a motion to go next after the session, then. Motion to adjourn the meeting. Not adjourn the meeting, go next after the motion to adjourn the regular meeting and go into executive session for first session. No, not adjourn the meeting, we're going to executive session. Go into executive session. That's all right. That was just discussed personality, you said?